another heroic send-off for a soldier failed defending the country. There have been such ceremonies since Kenyan Defense Forces entered Somalia under Operation Linda Inchi on the 16th of October 2011. The exact number of soldiers killed since then is not known. But what is known is that their death dealt a big blow to those who depended on them and for those who are married, the young widows are struggling to pick up the pieces. I did not expect it to happen anytime soon because we had just started life. And some are battling wars they least expected after family members turned against them. We are fighting the widow. We have the kids who are supposed to go to school. In the outskirts of Nakuru town, the headquarters of Nakuru County. Martha Chege cradles her baby deep in thought as she adjusts to life without the love of her life. Her husband, Josiah Chege Kamau, was killed in Kolbio just three weeks before she was to give birth to their third child. The same same week in Ali 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 pass, I'll go to the same week. I'll go and say man taka kuje di ani ani peleke osi. Kwasa babu the same same man the ni aliku fan di oniku apat ni patem toto. So iyo si kwenye Ali pass ni li okay to donke osi ku. Ni kamusa kama badu ana kuja home makani ambia adjaju abadu lakini tani ambia. Lakini sasa the following day we didn't talk. Ni li call la kwa nashika simu. So, si kwa najua kitu nye ilikuwa imehappen, after wazi tiyo niliona kwa news, kitu nye ilihappen sasa. So, siku, ata siku pata mtoto, uchungu ilikataa kukuja kabisa. After, sasa unoja stress ilienza hapo. Uchungu ilikataa kukuja kabisa, mtoto nikasikia, mtoto nikambiwa osi, mtoto wamechoka, ikabidi niyambio niende nifanyue operation. Kwa niko nilipitisha, I had to go for a CS. Yenye nilienda la sandi, uyu mtoto wakona one week. Kuniambia, ili delay? Ili delay. Lakini uchungu liku inakuja inapotea. Lakini nilipitisha na two weeks. Yeah, I think ata ilikuwa kitu three weeks. Kwa sababu nasikia nijifungua mtoto on last Sunday. Yeah. Her husband was among those failed when terrorists attacked their camp. It is reported that at least 68 soldiers died in the dawn attack on the 27th of January this year. Iyo usiku tuliongea sana. Okay, ya likuwa na call, na kata, na piga tena. Alikuwa niambia mambo mingi. Haka ntumia message. Kitu ya mwisho alintumia. Kitu saa sita hapo. Alintumia text. Haka niambia. Hata iyo text kwa hapa. Haka niambia. Badu iso simeja tu hapa. Iso message nye likuwa metuma iyo siku. Haka niambia. Eti... Just take care of yourself and take care of the kids. Martha has kept recordings of conversations with her husband moments before his death. I don't know if I'm going to go out for Eh? <laughs> 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 The recordings, she says, are her lasting memories of the man who has now turned her life around in two very spectacular ways. After I was in the Somalia, I was in Somalia, I was in Somalia, I was in Somalia, I was in Somalia, 
the moment niliona jina Colbio nikajua bwanangu amekufa kwa sababu my husband sinakwambia he used to call every now and then he didn't call hakunipigia simu sayo siku wa kupiga simu Ah uh, after kitu 3 hours ndio niliona kwa news nikaona kuna wenye wamekufia Somali first wa kwa meleta at 57 confirmed dead Haya sasa kumpikia simu ashiki simu alafu nilikuwa najua hata anything ki happen Somali alikuwa ananipigia simu immediately ananiambia kuna attack imefanyika na mimi niko niko safe So when I was picking up the whole day I kept simu nikajua the what has happened and the confirmation process was even more torturous kuna namba nilipewa nikaambiwa ni confirm kwa hiyo namba nikapiga hiyo namba mwenye nilipigia kanilisa service namba ya bwanangu nikampea service namba plus majina zake akaniambia nimpatie 5 minutes a confirm atanipea report ata 5 minutes ikuisha after 3 minutes akanipigia simu akaniambia tume confirm na bwanako yuko poa akaniambia by the way bwanako ali manage kuepa na yuko yuko kwa bush alitoka na buduki na maji kutoka hizo lakini nilijua ni uongo kwa sababu hakuna fenye yani unajua aliniambia eti bwanango bwana eti bwanako ametupigia simu na ame confirm yuko yuko poa mimi nikajua hapana bwanangu kama yuko poa na yuko na simu mimi ndiye the first person angefanya nini angenipigia nikamwambia ni sawa haya hiyo siku tukalala mimi nika okay nilikuwa 50-50 nilikuwa najiambia maybe mse wangu yuko poa ama he's not okay nilikuwa hata nilikuwa na mtext namwambia babes kama uko poa just talk to me nikafikia maybe bwanangu hata ana pesa nilimtumia mpaka do kwa mpesa Haya, si by the bausiku simu ikaingia mteja. Yaani simu iko iko ingia, ingia tena sasa. The following day tena morning nika nika call the same sim number. Wakaniambia bwanako yuko poa na wa, penye walikuwa wameama. Eti wameenda kwa kambi ingine. Sasa nikajua it's not true cause first waliniambia mse wangu ameenda ameepa na eti yako peke yake alimanage kubeba buduki na maji so yuko poa. Sasa tena wameniambia aje eti mse wako wameama kwa kambi wameenda kwa a different nini a different kambi nikamwambia ni sawa I was so disturbed siku analala her patience was running out day 3 Nika call the same same number wakaniambia usiku sasa kitu saa kitu saa tatu. Mwenye nilikuwa naongea na yeye nikamcall hapo anachika simu akantumia sasa namba nyingine akaniambia call this number alafu ulise fenye kuko nikachukua hiyo namba nikacall nikamwambia mimi naitwa mother my husband alikuwa Somali na tujaongea na yeye so far sijui anything kumuhusu muniambia tu kwa kama yuko safe ama yuko poa tu niko ready for anything instead ya kuniweka na stress akanitisha service number nikamwambia service number na majina akaniambia give me five minutes i confirm then i let you know nika nika hata siku mesa 2 minutes akapiga simu akaniambia ngoja kesho kuna watu watakuja home kwako wataleta ripoti sasa nikajua his normal the following day hata saa mbili kwa imefika ndio wakakuja wakaleta ripoti akatuambia he was among wenye wali walikufia Somali ndio saa tukaenda Nairobi wa memorial nika sign tukiwa na my dad in law tukaoneshwa mwili How was the experience? I didn't see the body. I couldn't see the body. You see I was pregnant by then. So I was so weak. Hata watu wa familia walikuwa wamekataa niende nikamuone. So I didn't see the body. Aged 27, Martha is among many who must now focus on bringing up their young families without their father. The attack in Kulbio took place just 12 days after a landmine attack left three KDF soldiers dead at Damasa near the Kenya Somalia border on the 15th of January. 
and my name is Helen Chebet Birech, wife to the late Silas Kirwalele. He served the army for eight good years. He was stationed at Nainuki, but they were they travelled to Wajia for for patrol. That's where he met his death. My husband died on Sunday 15th. The last day we talked was on 14th. That was Saturday. And what we were discussing about is how we are going home. He, was, he, sent, he even sent me money to do the shopping for the unborn. I don't know whether he was prepared for his death or what, but he sent me a lot of money telling me to shop for the unborn, to shop for my little girl and for myself. That was on Saturday morning. I did all that during the day. <laughs> Evening when I tried to reach him and tell him that I've done all what he wanted me to do, he was off. Sunday morning again, before I traveled to I went I go to church. I tried to reach him, he was off. Sunday midday again he was off in the evening and I and, and I wondered what is wrong with this phone. Okay, on Monday again I tried him, he was off the whole day. Tuesday at around 10, I saw a lot of people here in the compound. And I was like, what is wrong? And we went into the, our house here and they told me, my husband is normal. <laughs> After some few minutes I came into my senses and I asked people what has happened and I was told that it was bomb. And it was like bomb. My husband was in borders, Damasa, the border of Damasa, Kenya, and Damasa, Somalia. And they were there for patrol. They had crossed the border. Upon coming back, they found that ambush. They were ambushed there with the ID and followed by bullets because, according to what I was told, my husband did not die with the ID. There was, during the post mortem, that part pathologist said that my husband had more than five bullet wounds in the chest and he could not make it. Yeah. Yes. The death of the 32-year-old soldier was a big blow to the expected mother who is just 27 years old. <coughs> He died when I was six and a half months pregnant. And he was very happy. Although for me, I, I, I did not agree that much because my pregnancy came earlier than I anticipated. Mm -hmm. Because my firstborn is just one year, seven months. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ha, this, is, this has come very early. But my husband was very comfortable with it. By now, that seven months, six and a half months, we are already done with the shopping. We are just waiting for the baby to come. Yeah, he was happy with it. It is so funny because on August, they came here for the engagement. Because they, are, they had not officiated that with the parents. We just did a customer marriage in the DC. So they come here for that the... That was in 2014. That was in 2014. Mm -hmm. So last year, August, they came here home for the engagement. And immediately that same week after the, the engagement, that is when I conceived. Okay, after the scan, we knew what we, we had. And they told me I will call my baby Cheruto. Cheruto means visitors coming. Yeah. That you will change! Change! That you will change! Change! change. A year to the Kolbio attack, Kenya had experienced the highest loss of military men in Somalia. That was in the Elade attack on the 15th of January 2016. Tenth of soldiers, some newly married, paid the ultimate sacrifice to protect Kenyans. Al Shabab overran a KDF camp in Elade. We are invigorated. We are emboldened to pursue this enemy. It was the deadliest attack on KDF since their entry into the Wotan country. 
stand aside and look. Many of those whom they protect have trouble even imagining how much courage their service demands of them. And yet these patriots stick to their task day after day, night after night. A year later, full answers on what really happened are yet to be availed. In the heart of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, Dora Nandege was left a widow with two children to fend for following the Eladi attack. Kopro Patrick Kunani was an electrician with the KDF. He was the man in charge of wiring the camp to ensure there was electricity and communication. We, the last picture that he sent me in the phone, Dora narrates her ordeal that lasted three weeks as she sought to establish whether her husband was alive or among the dead. I told the counselors after two weeks that, uh, please, this is serious. My husband is dead. My instinct tells me that he is no more. Because it, if he, he was there, he could have come back home. You know, he was a man who could do anything for his family. So he could even get even the phone if the phone was there. I know he could go take the phone from any other person and just call me to tell me that I'm there or I'm safe. You know, that one could be enough for me. I told them, what you do, just tell me because we lawyers, uh, we can do anything. You take me to the morgue, I just go, I put these bodies, I check them. Eh? I can do the checking myself. If he's there, I'll just definitely find him. They told me, those bodies, the conditions of those bodies are not good. They are very worse. So, there is nothing we can do, madam. It's now past two weeks. I'm convinced that he died. I told God, cause your son to come back home. I really need him home because I don't know what I'll be telling my kids that your father went in war and he didn't come back home. You don't know whether he's dead or he's alive. God, cause him to come back home. I've accepted. Now they did the fingerprints. Then they, so because we were going there every day, even if they tell you that don't come back tomorrow, you know you can't. He told us now we, we have like six bodies that we have identified the fingerprints. So we want to, we brought the bodies. So we want the families to go and give us a positive identification. So we waited. The first name was read. It was not my husband. The second name was mentioned. It was not my husband. The third name. The third name was him. The third name was him. Just like the way boy had said that the third name, he, he saw the third person as the uncle. It was coincidence that the third name, the third name was Patrick. But the difficult part for Dora Nandege was the physical positive identification of Patrick Kunani. I told them I'll only go under some certain conditions. I will only view that body because they said the conditions of the body were worse. Huh? So I told them I'll only view that body if they, t they have to tell me the body, is it a full body? If it is a full body, I'll see the height. And then when I see the height, I'll know that he's my husband. When I read that door, I entered in. I saw a tall man on the tray. Without opening, I knew it was Patrick. The height was his. They opened up. When I saw when I saw the facial expression, oh my! Oh, it needs your own. The body was there. I thank God because his whole body was there. He had a gunshot here. Now it exploded from here. Then he was shot here. It uh, exploded from the the, the tummy. Then he also was cut. 
Yeah, but I thank God the 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 body the, the, the immediately it, it it didn't fell down. So they 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 they, they, they did what they, they went and put there some stitches so that there it can be intact. It was tough. I I saw I saw that everything has come to an end because now that is the truth. There is nothing you can do. It is the better side of it. It is the truth. It is no more. And with his death, Dora's tap dried up, her dreams shattered. You, you stay and you say that maybe he's coming to take care of us. When, especially during end month, you just stay and say, no, he was the one paying rent. You know, buying sugar, a lady, you can do that. But now paying rent, you know, you see a man doing that, huh? and he has been doing that every day. So you say, maybe he's coming to pay rent, and you see you are the one to do that. To convincing my, my son, my daughter was good. Huh? She, she, she accepted it because she, she is 13 years now. This son here, he, he was the problem because making calls every day, every time he could, the, the moment he could wake up, he could talk to the dad. In the evening, they could talk. Now, that was the problem. Mom, I want to talk to my dad. He could take the phone, dial. He went to WhatsApp because he knew WhatsApp. He dials. He said, it's calling. Daddy is not picking the call. I could tell him that he has gone for work. He will call you later. When I call his number, I could call his number. Then I tell him, you see, it is staying in Tejan. As she struggles to ensure her children get the best, her hope is that the African mission in Somalia will compensate her family for the loss. Families of the slain officers received gratuity from the Kenya Defense Forces. But the money did so little for Dora and her children as her in-laws demanded a share rendering the amount insignificant. It has been tough for Helen Birich, whose husband died on the 15th of January this year. Her father-in-law has refused to release forms needed for KDF to compensate the family, compounding her pain. The KDF are very supportive to me. In fact, I was there yesterday and they even gave me something to use with the baby. They did not leave me just that way. They support me with the small they have in the barracks for the widows. The problem on my side is, I think, the family issue. They did not expect I've been published there. Everything is me. Yeah? It came as a shock to them. So they started so many things, even looking for children outside and said it was my husband's kids. Then I said, well, if you really know the wise kids, maybe decided to hide me, to make me happy, to protect me. Fifth, on 27th, when we were burying my husband, the military gave my father forms. Then upon fulfilling those forms, those forms was only talking about me as a spouse. So they had to declare I'm the wife, filling that, th those forms, everything. And my father retained the form. That form has to be filled and returned back immediately. But he returned it on Monday. Life became so miserable for Birich in her matrimonial home in Moi Ben, forcing her to seek refuge back in her father's house. I think in that home I was the only person who traveled to bring my husband's bodies home with my friends. Yeah, nobody escorted me, only my friends. I went to bring my husband's bodies home. I did everything, like signing the whatever the military wanted me to do. But to them, my father-in-law was not happy about it. About the compensation thing, what made me to come out of that home? He told me, "Iyo pesa ni yenu tu, mimi ndachungia nyinyi." And it is your money, I'll just take care of it. I told him, no, I'm a widow, I'm 27 years old, I'm going to stand for myself and my kids.
and he was not happy about it and then I was like ah, things are not good here because you are somewhere where people are not talking to you and you have just buried your husband the other day so I just came back home so you thought the environment was not good was for not you. good for me with my situation because when I received this news even my blood pressure skyrocketed the battle with her in-laws has brought bitterness and to date she can't understand why they turned against her. My husband had rental houses back in the village. Since he died on 15th January, okay, the February rent, my father-in-law collected the rent. March rent, he again collected the rent. But he has not sent me even a cent to take care of my child with. He has taken it all mm -hmm. and said that my son, it, and said that it belongs to my son. Have you tried to sit down with your father-in-law and um, tell him, for example, that yes, uh, you recognize that he is the father to your late husband, but again, you have children that you share together with his son, so you need to take care of them, and the properties um, and the compensation uh, will come in handy. My father-in-law doesn't want any direct confrontation or phone call from me. Even when I call him like this, I want to talk to him. He'll just hear whatever I want to start the topic and he drop the call. Let him try to have a little human heart. In Nairobi at Harambe Sako, when we are going to take some compensation there, then he was told Helen is the legal wife, is the one going to be a signatory to take the money. He abused me telling me, Unataka kuchukua pesa ya kijana yangu kama nani? out of even me I was in bitter and I told him I was not your son's house girl. I was his legally married wife because I was mad. I told him I was not your son's house wife. House girl. I was his wife, legally married wife. We left a drama and history at Arambe Sako. We accessed it and I had to share with him half half, but he wanted whole. Whole, but we shared it half half. It was tough, things were not easy there. But you had no intention of denying him uh, something? Eh? Definitely. I met their son when he was employed. They have taken him through school, everything, basic needs. So even me, I had that human heart. These are their parents. They have to get something. I shared that with them. And that was also my intention. I could give them a good amount, something half. I'm telling you, if, my husband, uh, if I was not legally married, if my husband had not published me in the KDF, things, were, things could have not been easy for me. Yeah. Surviving a spouse who has died suddenly, whether in war or through other violent means, is, is a difficult process mm -hmm. and, and the family requires support in order to be able to grieve and to go through this process uh, as, as, as near normal as possible. I would think that the government would just find a, a legal team that will help these widows for free because it's really crazy. Some of the widows even give up. We have many of them who have never been compensated till today. But it would be possible for the government to just sort it and say, you know what, even if we are fighting the widow, we have the kids who are supposed to go to school. You can't leave kids to leave school because uh, families are fighting. The kids have rights to education. Their father died fighting for this nation. Why should they live a miserable life? Apparently, the battle with in-laws is synonymous with the young widows of the Kenyan soldiers. <laughs> Jessica Kiplagat, wife to a former army man, is pioneering the formation of a KDF Widows Association. She says there is a systemic failure on how institutions stand in the gap created by the death of their men at the battlefront. Your husband is brought on a close to coffin. There is nothing in that coffin. You'd never even see your husband. How will you go through the healing process when we have to pay for counseling services? After husbands die, what happens from there? So we have to go chasing, paying for medical, all that. 
can we have a continued process where after husband's die we can still enjoy medical cover by the government? I would also think that the government should implement um, a, an, a compulsory education policy that every military soldier gives their kids a, an education policy for the kids. Whenever you have a kid, make sure that that kid is covered. Young families are being left like me with my kids. We are very young. Yeah. I don't know what the military will do to protect them. But what I know, my husband usually tells me, we were called to serve. And I swore that I will serve them with, with all the duties given there. Yeah. A military person who serves for less than 12 years, they are not pensionable. So means when your husband dies before attaining the 12 years, means you only get the gratitude and that is it. No pension, no salary, no nothing. So you're just given even if it's the, the 4 million lump sum, that is the end of it. And this is the 4 million you have to, to share with the family. I mean, you know, nobody, like the military guys, they don't used to die at that age. Uh, nothing is 100%. Professor Lukoi Atuli, a psychiatrist, is in support. This is a, perhaps one of the times that we are getting actively engaged in, in conflicts in, in our area and losing soldiers. It is prudent that uh, the government rethinks uh, this policy and, and uh, gives all the support they can to widows because every time a soldier leaves, he needs to be comforted that if anything happens to him, his family will not suffer. But if he's going out there to fight for the country, but at the back of his mind he has a nagging fear that if he's disabled or if he's killed, then his family will definitely suffer, I think he might not give 100% to the government given these worries. I mean, you cannot insist that somebody should have served for so long before they get you know, some benefits after they are killed. They are not coming back, they are not working anywhere else. That policy ought, in my view, to apply to people who, are in, who serve and then leave the military. This brigade of widows has vowed to ensure that the memories of their husbands live forever. They don't want them forgotten. He will still remain to, the la to be the love of my life. Forever. I think it was different than I was home. Because I was home, I was home, I was home, I was home. He was a good guy. I miss everything about him. Mm. He was so lucky. I was home, I was home, I was home, I was home. There was a lot of people who were home, who were home, who were home, who were home. Yeah, he used to... We used to be so happy. After compensation, I wanted to buy a shamba and build a home for my children. That was my husband's immediate dream. Build our home, that will be Silas' home, that will be the home of Silas' kids. But again, I'm one strong woman. Everything is going to be okay. I'll take care of Silas' kids. They'll never lack. That's one thing I've assured them. They'll never lack. They'll never ask, why did daddy go? Why did daddy die? No. That is what I want to avoid in their lifetime. I'll not again take that much time thinking about the in-laws. Yes, I love them. They are my people. My children are theirs. And I know this is just a few months thing. They'll come back to their senses and they will live as a family again. That is my dream too. I love them. Some people say uh, your boy resembles his father. Is that true? <laughs> Very true. Yeah, my, my son, I mean, resembles him a lot. Especially the ears, the height, mm -hmm. and the, his behavior. He's a very cool boy. He's a love of fashion. So he gives you some memories? I whenever we, s we sit in the house, just look at him, he looks like the dad. And most of the time he even tells me, see daddy was like this. He even <laughs> used to dress like this. Hmm? Sometimes he can go to the mirror and just look at himself and say, you know, I look like dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, um, it's, it's good that he left somebody behind, at least somebody we can look at and, I mean, 
Let's know that he, he didn't just live like that. At least he left some something behind. Jessica Kiplagat's husband died in a plane crash, but she has chosen to move soothed by the sweet memories of her late pilot husband, Enoxicolia, NTV. Two, three, up! The time you will change! Two, up! The time you will change! Two, up!